Hi, this is Lynn Hardy. We're here today doing dream interpretations. Um, today we will explain, I'll explain briefly one of the main components of many dreams and what it means. We will talk about dwellings. This can be a house, it can be an apartment, it can be a tent. Uh, I've even seen dreams where people are living in their car on, uh, on top of their car in a tent, which has a specific meaning. So the place that we live um, in a dream, wherever we're, our dwelling is, it speaks loudly about our life. Our house represents our life. The walls rep can represent um, the structure of our life. The roof is our, our main beliefs concerning our, our life. Um, the foundation are our foundational beliefs. So uh, think of the roof as where your faith is and how well you're equipped with the faith in, to protect you and the foundation as things that um, are your foundational beliefs. So if you have a cracked foundation, it means there is some belief that is in your foundational basics with God that is wrong. It's, it's making your whole life unstable because there's a crack. The walls are the structures that you live by. Um, different rooms in, in the houses have different meanings. We'll go into that next week. But for this week, just think about where your dream is taking place. If it's in a hotel, that's a temporary residence. It's a temporary spot, temporary spot that you're in. If it's an apartment, it's, um, your life might not be as big as, as it will be, but it's connected to a lot of different people. If your um, home is in a shopping mall, it means that your home is surrounded by many um, many tools, many things, many things that you buy for your life. You're very, you're consumption orientated. In other words, you have great access to either gifts, um, finances, or physical things that you purchase. So, and, or perhaps God will be bringing those into your life. So wherever you're living, that represents your life. Everything about that um, building will speak to some part in your life. The other part about a house that you should be aware of is that the backyard is the past, the front yard is the future. The garage is your ministry or how the housing for your ministry and your destiny. Um, it's how you're gonna move forward towards your destiny and how well you're equipped there in life. So those are just a few basics um, concerning dreams and interpretation. Like all, dream interpretations, this is not a hard and fast rule because with the Holy Spirit, these rules, these guidelines only apply half the time. The other half of the time, they'll have a unique meaning that is specific to your dream and it'll be shown by the things around it. So you have Joanne. So my dream started, like I felt like I was watching a movie and that um, I was in the mo I was the woman in the movie, but at some points um, I wasn't. Like uh, I'll just tell it how it came, and then I'll I think it'll come through. So there was a woman that looked like the movie star Diane Lane in the movie in the in the dream, and she bought a row home. The row homes didn't look like the one that I live in now um, that I just moved into um, but it looked like these ones that are familiar to me um, in, tr in a city that I know and um, but the scene itself was like a different city uh, anyway so at this so in this at this point I thought maybe it was me in the dream because I was like in the body of this person like I was looking through it's like I could see her, but see through her eyes at the same time. And at this point, the woman was telling her girlfriends about the row home and where it was. And everyone seemed to be dressed like it was the 1970s. And I felt like I knew them, but I didn't. But these people in the dream were close friends of the woman who was trying to get her life together and buying this row home. Um, and then as she was telling her story, the girlfriends looked at the woman and 
like just very animatedly told the woman that she was crazy because there was a bar down at the end of the row homes named O'Toole's and they were laughing at the woman because she made such a bad choice. And so now I'm watching the woman go to see the row home. Like I'm watching, it's like I'm watching a movie. And it was in the early evening at first dusk. She's walking down the street in front of the row home complex. And there's these like eight year olds to 15 year old kids who still look like they're dressed in the seventies, start to follow her without saying anything at first. This woman was thinking, it was a little bit of a rough neighborhood and she sees a small car that had crashed through one of the row homes front sitting room windows so like it wasn't the row home she bought but it was one down the way and like a car had crashed through the window and it was suspended on the window sill and the home and that specific home with the car in it the lights were still on the woman was trying to figure out what happened she thought it might have been a drunk driver from the bar which I didn't see the bar in the dream, but I knew it was there. She or me questioned, sorry, she questioned how the car crashed into the window. Like I was just trying to figure out why it did. Um, and I didn't know anyone who lived in those homes. Then um, she looked at the other row homes in the complex and discerned that they were in different states of maintenance, but none of them really too bad. Um, I noticed that they had some fences or railings on their small porch to the entries, but some didn't. The house with the car didn't have any barriers. We thought we should make sure our appointment, sorry, that our, that the row home um, had a place, had barriers. And then the woman arrived at the home that she was going to live in and it was almost night now. She could see that it needed some work, but she knew that. The kids show up and want to come in and the woman asked why. And one of the older ones said, um, who was on like a banana seat bike, we want to understand. The woman um, thought it was strange and wordlessly motioned that these four or five kids could come into the house with her. So now I'm watching like a movie again and watching her go into this pretty rundown home and the kids are following her. Everything in the house is absolutely covered in dust. And there is some furniture in the house, like someone just got up and suddenly left everything halfway done packing. They see a dirty, old, yellow, 60s styles polyester couch. And then all of a sudden the ceiling catches on like supernatural fire. But staying on the ceiling about a foot deep and doesn't burn anyone or anything. And at first the woman and the kids are terrified. <sighs> and the woman holds the kids back to make sure they're not burned. And then they notice that the fire isn't consuming anything. She asks the kids, what happened here? And what would make that happen? The kid says, I don't know, but a priest or a pastor lived here before. The woman keeps looking in the house and trying, like looking at, like inside the house and trying to figure out what was going on. She was worried something really bad happened in the home and that's why it was run down and that it, you know that there was no one living there the woman is searching and she is looking through dusty drop sheets piled on the floor and she reaches down and it's like i'm watching from the sheets that she's digging through and she pulls up this absolutely dried out dusty bone hand with the forearm attached and skin dried on and the and the woman is appalled and almost ready to run, but something catches her eye. On the ring finger of the hand, there's three bands of almost sparkling white gold. And the center band has like a marquee cut light blue diamond or gemstone surrounded by white diamonds on it. I wanted the woman to run away like as I'm watching her and call the police, but she was trying to figure out the rings. And then it said the arm, and then I have written like the arm might have had very old fashioned clothing on the bones, but it was deteriorated. And then I woke up because I wondered why I was watching a horror movie and I didn't want to watch it anymore. Like I actually thought that in the dream and made myself wake up. Okay, this dream has a lot of really interesting components. Um, the fact that it's a movie 
means that it's something from the past. Movies are made and then watched later. So this is a recountance of something in the past. The person may be you, or it may actually be a past relative that you're, you're sh it's showing maybe foundations of, of long ago. Okay. Uh, particularly, you have the era of the 70s. Mm -hmm. So houses in a row, in a, a row home that, the, you know, they're all pretty identical. Um, this means that you, there was a time when you or, or someone close to you entered um, a, a new life that's being born again. And the the way they came into this and the, and the initial coming in to this new life as a Christian, um, a lot of people criticized. So it wasn't a, you know, there were some people in their life that really strongly objected to it. Um, O'Toole's is a, a bar where spirits are served, but it's man-made spirits. And and Irish um, is actually, the Irish people are actually known for their love of natural spirits. So this represents um, that a lot of people in that person's life, whether it's yours or someone else's, said, oh, you know, just do it this other way. So I feel like that is a, a, some sort of organization where the, the spirits were fake. They weren't really following the Holy Spirit. But... This person was determined to connect with God, even though they were really new at it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, a vehicle going through a front window, a window represents viewing into the spirit realm, and, and a vehicle is destiny. Um, so that means that this person's life was greatly impacted by a ministry that, that was operating in the spirit realm. So this neighborhood that's kind of sketchy, um, a little bit on the sketchy side, means that there, these, are, these are ways that are from the past. Okay. So these would be older beliefs, over, older, more established beliefs. And this can be seen in your dream when you enter because everything's really dust covered, meaning mm -hmm. it's been around a long time. And the beliefs that you entered under or the person in the stream entered under um, they believed in the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's what the fire on the ceiling is. Mm -hmm. it, it also represents, you know, your covering. And so the Holy Spirit is our covering. He's the one who comes in and he, and it, he rests like a flame on top of our head. So this represents mm -hmm. that you came into this life through a church or a pastor who really believed in the power of the Holy Spirit and even had that power in their lives. And when you entered in as a Christian, you were probably very shocked to find the Holy Spirit in your life, and um, as were your friends. So the little kids represent um, baby new Christians that kind of came into your life about the same time. And the older woman is a more uh, senior Christian who's been a Christian a while, but obviously not filled with the Holy Spirit because she didn't recognize the flame and was scared of it. So this may be demonstrations of the Holy Spirit that started moving. So, um, so I, I believe in the 70s was the deliverance movement. This may be in reference to that. It was mm -hmm. the Jesus movement where, mm -hmm. where people started calling on the name of Jesus. You know? yeah. so, so these churches were probably founded back then. Okay. Now the old woman with the dried up, uh, hand with the ring so um, a ring is a symbol of power but the flesh is all dried up meaning they are not really still flowing in the holy spirit they're they're really they're dry in their spiritual mm -hmm. walk mm -hmm. um, but the power is still there the, the anointing of the holy spirit so the the blue represents communion and revelation from god um, and the and the white is righteousness, so they're operating under these things, which is fascinating to you. But at the same time, there's something about them you probably feel the dried upness that you're not quite ready to leap into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does that speak to your life, or is it somebody else's life that you know that the Lord is revealing to you? 
no i think i think it's me um i definitely was uh when i came to christ it was a pastor who really believed in the holy spirit but um and he, and he uh definitely um came to christ in the jesus movement uh, and then but he probably, ended up being a pastor of a very traditional church that's the um, dust cover. and that's where i met him there but he was some, the one who introduced me to a spiritual yeah. realm that i had no idea existed and so there's probably some older christians who looked at him like he was crazy oh definitely you know? and did very disapproving so that's what yeah he he is. ended up they ended up getting rid of him out of the church because and that's why his house was vacant mm -hmm. and god is saying that he's moving your life in that same direction as that other pastor he wants you to take up the cross that the other pastor had to be covered in, by the holy spirit in that same way so that's it that was okay. the Lord's dream to you, letting you know that um, the fullness of all those things and your place in it, your place is to take up that mantle that he had, the, the, the life that he had. Okay. Thank you. And you're welcome. And just know that you, there will be some criticism because that's the warning of the stream, right? Yeah. The Holy Spirit saying, there are some people that are going to look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Okay. I hope that okay. helps for your dream. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Kathleen. So you've been having dreams about um, your birth, your home of your birth, which you no longer live in. Yes. This represents um, things that happened at that time when you were living in that home that mm -hmm. are still affecting you now. So depending on what goes on in the, these dreams, well, is what the Holy Spirit is trying to help you clear out of your past. So it can be concerning unforgiveness or bitterness or abuse. Um, so the Holy Spirit's trying to help you come to terms with it and, and saying, just bring these to me and let's examine, you know, this part of your life so you, that's still affecting you now. Yes, that would be, that would make sense. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Because uh, I would I would have a lot of resentment and um, anger towards a brother who cheated on me, you know, and, and took my inheritance. Because at the time I was living in the home, and then because I was ill, I moved out uh, and bought my home here in town. And uh, you know, I, I I never received promises of money that he had he had said, you know, he would he would give me when the home was sold. So I would still hold on to that, and I've never—I I haven't had healing for it. And, so, uh, so God is calling you to give that over to Him. He's saying you have to let go of this. So right. you need to have a prayer session with the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Call, you know, ask the Holy Spirit and the Lord to help you remove this, and know that this life is short. Your eternal home in heaven is yeah. awesome, right? And <laughs> and nothing here matters really that much uh, mm -hmm. that God is your provider and he will provide all that you need mm -hmm. that, that all of the stuff you should have inherited doesn't matter at all. God has a different mm -hmm. way of providing for you. If you will just let go of that and lean on him. Okay. Yeah. I had thought about taking it to the courts and uh, even today it came up in my mind. I was reading something about injustice and things that and I said oh maybe I that I need to be taking this to the, the courts you know for justice and but I the don't just, know God will only bring justice once you let go of it okay so he can't get involved until you are you let go of it and you forgive yeah. and let go of the bitterness yeah. and give that all over to him and know yeah. that he is your provider he that no matter what anybody else says or does that he can overcome mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. right and yeah. he'll have something better for you okay yes mm -hmm. i find it hard to get i, I find it hard to come to that stage you know i do say oh yes i forgive and everything else and it leaves me for a while and then it comes back again and then i have to push it away so and... 
Yeah, so that's a testing of, of the spirit that's had a place in your life and been influencing you. And mm -hmm. so when those thoughts come back, you just have to say, uh-uh, I'm taking that thought captive. I have, you know, I'm letting go of this. God has it. I'm not worried about this at all. So that's okay. what it, Paul means by taking the thoughts captive. When these things okay. come, try and reassert themselves, you say, nope, I'm not giving that a place. God, mm -hmm. you have taken care of this. I've forgiven them. It's, it's yours. Mm -hmm. And I go one step further, and I usually ask God to bless whoever the enemy is trying to ask me to come against. Yes. I mean, the last dream I had, it was sort of a kind of a happy one. I was there in the home, and my mother was there. Uh, she's long dead, of course. And um, what uh, I thought uh, seemed to be like a funeral or a hearse coming down the lane, um, it, it, it didn't turn out that there was no coffin, coffin in it. It was all just full of lovely, beautiful flowers. So I thought, well, that's a happy dream. Something, yes. Yeah. That the Lord maybe was bringing some goodness, you know, into that area. So flowers, flowers represent love, the mm -hmm. love relationship with the Lord. So what God is saying, and in your dream, um, your father op often will represent God. So it may very, very well be God saying, let go of all this in the past and focus on my love and the love yeah. that I'm bringing into your life. Okay. And though it was my mother, it was there in the dream. Oh, Mother yeah. often represents um, Holy Spirit. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's... Well, thank you. You're that welcome. Is... Yes. But why do they recur? Is it because I haven't let go? Because you haven't dealt with it yet. I yes. Yeah. So the only way to deal with it is by going to the Father and Holy Spirit and it... get their help and... Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let them know that you need to you let them know. Don't be afraid to let them know. I need your help with this. It is my mm -hmm. desire to fully forgive, to let go of any bitterness and resentment, any, any unforgiveness. I ask that you take the, the roots of bitterness out of my heart. I don't want them anymore. I love them. All these people who have wronged me, I ask that you bless them. Yes. And I know that you're my provider, that this inheritance is not, you know, my provider, that you are. I know. That's it. Yeah. He might provide by some other total different means. It mightn't be that inheritance at all. It Ex could be something. Exactly. Another person it could be. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And God won't be able to move until you let go of it. All right. <laughs> God, I love that. Thanks. I will work on it very quickly. <laughs> okay, Kathleen. <laughs>